Who's gonna rush that 20 seconds left with the clock? Okay, oh, oh, the oh. Is with the clock drag! And there you go, JDC up! And the tournament champion for Electric Clutch 2019! Ooh. Winning in some 150 second world tour points! Yeah. He doesn't have a lot, he's in the corner. But Wizzy has a lot of stage to play with. Oh, Return that's it! The knee. That's it! Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Oh! What was that? <laughs> This Yo. man has warrior blood in his veins! And welcome everyone to Esports in 30. I'm Brady Moore, and this is the homie Drew Fuzz. Drew had a busy week in an electric clash. We also had a lot of history at Smash and Splash, but first, man, Drew, talk to me about the event. This was, uh, this was sick. You had a lot to do with it. How like, was it? Uh, dude, I, I don't know how it happened, but we, Toronto managed to get a Tekken World Tour challenge That's spot. so sick. And the, my team, Incendium, we, we put the, together this event. We flew out like a bunch of players yeah. uh, to, to this event. That way people could play the Canadians. We're talking about like JDCR, Anakin, Joey Fury, Big all these high-level names, dude. Level dude. Names, yeah. dude. They, and Speed Kicks, oh, they came here just to play. And uh, we even had a guy from Peru, Abo the Maestro, that guy. That's crazy. awesome. Bro, all right, I want to talk about that a bit, but first on the agenda is Smash Tournament at the Water Park. Let's check out the Smash Melee highlights from Smash and Splash 5. Okay. It only adds up. Oh, oh, I saw the vision though, Wizzy. Yeah, he only meant to get hit by one of those. Okay. would have been able to get it. Okay. okay. Oh, oh! Wow! Oh! Oh! oh. Ah, Wizzy! Oh. <laughs> and Wizzy! Wizzy with the three to one. Ed cancels the stomp and does another stomp for no reason. Oh no, he jumped right there. Left and though. Tech chasing. Up tilt. Back here. Us, yep. us, us game. Yep. Mango, oh, trying to make it as far as possible, but left is just on him. Or oh, doesn't do his characteristic drift back. Left is actually whipping. Oh, Gets the second Leffin. shine. Left is taking it over Mango. Oh, oh, they, oh, is the Quattro coming? I thought it was uh, Quattro and Cup. Oh, yeah, I think it is. He's about to get shine. Oh, no, he's still living. Oh. But this is that opener. Oh, my. Oh, he oh. the Quattro, baby. Last He's right rock. back in it. Game five, who goes to Losers Finals, who goes home? We're about to find out in like two minutes. Oh, it's Zane. not even. Yeah. Zane goes home, Leppin takes it. Like, Wizzy has been spacing everything perfectly so that he's like he's never really a threat from up to, which is going to be the thing he's got to see. Got him. Ooh, gets the grab, yeah. Can he get the kill though, no? Was he though? Oh, Tony Boss, can you get the sense guard? No. One over. What? Up tilt. Oh, no, he's used he to jump. jump. Wait, oh no. Do some performance smash, but that's not the move you want. Oh, he two no. up, drops, touch, chase the nerves. He's got no jump. Oh, he's got no stop. Oh, wow. Leffen takes it on the double jump steal. Leppin's now trying to hunt him down, going straight from up tilt mode to like aggro oh mode. My God. I think that he just paid for it. Perfect angle. He's back on stage. He's back off stage. He is dead. Yeah. Ooh, he's letting those back ears rip. Smoke everywhere. Oh, no uh -oh, way. No. Jam, yeah. Rest. <laughs> oh, he's looking for another one of those big bombs. Yeah. I'm loving the descending uh, nair when he's getting in those like slightly above it positions. Oh! Uh, Confirmed. Just and with the little pop off. The yes. Oh yeah. For a oh, second there, it looked like Xbox was, was throwing like. to his boy. Yo! Oh, got the actual tech Yo. chase. Yo! Din. Oh my goodness! He's up to it. He's got the 30 hunger bombs. Let's see it. No way. Oh. oh. Well, Hunkerbox a little uh, jump shot oh, right now. Yeah. He doesn't have a lot. He's in the corner. But Wizzy has a lot of stage to play with. Oh, Return that's it! The knee. That's it! Oh, oh. 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 oh! What was that? <laughs> this Yo. man has warrior blood in his veins and enemy blood all over <laughs> the stage. Go. Smash and Splash 5, Melee Singles Champion. Wizard, baby.
Wizrobe did what many people viewed as impossible, winning a major with Captain Falcon. Joining us now to chat about this historical moment in Melee, we've got Smash commentator Wobbles joining us. How are you, man? I'm doing fantastic, and even better, I got to be there for it, casting it, so... Yeah, well, uh, I why, felt pretty good. Why don't we talk about it, because that was nuts, Drew. Uh, oh, Captain Falcon, I don't think has won since, what, like, 2005 Yo, or something? since Eastside decided to play Melee. That, I haven't... That, 15 years, dog? That's nuts. Yes, I want to hear Legends of Captain Falcon <laughs> winning, dog. <laughs> like, right? That's OD. Like, it's nuts. Yeah, like, it's... so, like, what did he do? Like, what did... How did Wizrobe change all of that now at Smash and Splash? Okay, so first off, uh, really hammering out and flowcharting a combo game and a punish game that is consistent and executable, especially against his most nightmare matchups. Yeah. Like the ones that you always expected Falcon to lose uh, eventually, like maybe he'd beat a Spacey because he's going to miss Tex and he'll get knees, whatever. But a good Spacey should never lose. Mm -hmm. There was some comment on a YouTube video like uh, some matchup versus Dark Rain settled, air quote the fox falcon matchup and sure so, enough to get into top eight winner's side wizzy beats leffen evo champ from last year so it's uh, settled not anymore yeah so so what is it about now is it is it that we're you know i mean i think the real last like heavy shift in, in meta we saw was of course with uh hunger box jigglypuff yeah are we gonna see that now like we we have a lot of high level falcons you know like none in s uh, tj but like what is what is wizzy doing now is he doing something different or was it just like maybe this one tournament that he just stood out and was able to, to dominate okay so my take on it is two main things one patience uh, uh wizzy does not get impatient against somebody like hungry box a lot of people describe Hungrybox in particular as a player who wears you down and who tires you out, which is really impressive because he has to do it to everybody, but most people only end up playing him once and losing. Yeah. Wizzy can do the same thing back to him and win. Oh. Mm -hmm. So there's that. S2J and Nun are much more of this free form, aggressive, like really want to style. style. Uh, they want to win too, but they want to do it like more their way. Wizzy is willing to just say, I will down throw and follow you around the level a dozen times if that's what it takes i will carefully space for a yeah. six minute match if that's what it takes and i will switch between both that's good that's exhausting over the course of a five minute match if that's what it takes yeah and he's got the mental capacity to do that like i know i can camp for one game if yeah I that's it that's what i'm yeah, saying like I to know. have that restraint Hey, man, he's Captain America, dog, and that's just his Thanos. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all deep. Yeah, it's wild. And then, let me see. I would say that the other one is just the willingness to flow chart out and hammer out all the situations and then drill them over and over again until he's just nailing them. Whereas you mm -hmm. can see that S2J and Nun, they surprise the hell out of you. You know, yeah. you'll We're be like, crazy whoa, things. what did you just do? And sometimes it, they don't know. They just came up with it right <laughs> then and it happened to work. And they're like, I'm cool. That's... And Wizzy, you know, he, he's not worried about that as much. Yeah. He does what he knows will work. And he's got the the patience and the discipline to do it. Look, like we said before, it's been like 14 years since we saw Falcon win a major. What deficiencies yeah. does this character have that, that really warrant this long, long drought of victories? Because, like, we, he saw one the last time, and I wasn't even around, and I, you probably were just starting out melee when, when that happened. Yeah. Actually, the very first major that I went to was most three in Dallas, Texas, mm. and Isaiah did win that one with Falcon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so I was there for one of them. That was my first major. Uh, the biggest thing is that as people got faster and more uh, precise, especially on shield, Falcon's a bit slower out of shield. He's mm. got a slower jump. He's got slower aerials. So you stick to him on shield, and then he's stuck doing things like rolling, which is very punishable, yeah. uh, especially once it starts to get repetitive. Whereas nowadays, players have started to, one, uh, figure out a lot more about like using hitbox distortion. So if Falcon does a jump out of shield and he down airs. He kind of tucks his body into a ball mm -hmm. so he can actually dodge with the move and counter hit with the move. Mm. Then he can open you up. So that makes people worried about your move. Now you get to roll. Now you can escape or counter hit in two ways that people have to respect. Mm -hmm. And that sort of thing requires you to be on point with the tech yeah. and on point with spacing in a way that people weren't for a long time where the other characters were more obviously strong in those positions. So yeah. A lot of people were exploiting it.
Now, let, let's talk about, um, you know, an opponent that he's taken on twice, Hungry Box. I mean, we all <laughs> see Hungry Box at a tournament. We expect them to win this. This is, uh, I think, the second time, or twice at least then, uh, and then Gommel. Yeah, yeah, it was Gommel, he lost, he lost too. too. So uh, after that tourney, he tweeted out that he hasn't felt his loss in a matchup in years. So what are you seeing in the sets that's giving Wizzy the edge over over that uh, Puff and Hungry Box? And do you really think that maybe this is, that like H-Box isn't going to figure this out? Or is there a way for him to overcome this? Hungry Box is a strong player who is mm -hmm. used to people hitting him with really uh, tough matchups, to being studied, and then he mm -hmm. has to counter figure them out. So I have no doubt that he'll find a way to to keep it competitive. Uh, the thing is, what most players struggle with when they're in a really difficult matchup against a really good player is they're not like ready to pursue their openings because they mm -hmm. have no idea if they're going to get them. Yeah. You know, it's like, OK, I'm going to throw this move out. It's going to be. I'm going to try and keep it safe. Maybe it'll hit. I don't know. And then you hit and you go, oh, oh now, you're just now, not ready to combo, hit yeah. forward and chase him down. Somehow Wizzy is. <laughs> so somehow. <laughs> like, right? yeah, he like he'll get his hit and then he'll confirm. Yeah. And then he'll hit and then HBox will CC and then he'll somehow realize, oh, if I go forward, you're going to kill me and they'll back off. It's like he just keeps getting it right, mm. which is normally what like HBox is doing to other people. And so they'll occasionally hit him with something. It'll be really cool. But then just as often, they'll hit him with something. He'll crouch cancel. They'll dash at him. He'll counter hit. And then he'll follow up because he's ready and they're not. So I just think really a lot of this boils down to Wizrobe has been aiming for this sort of play for a long time yeah. and slowly and steadily refining it. And now he's uh, hitting it just just enough to keep winning you know, against a lot of people. And then H-Box, Falcon kills early, right? Yeah. Up air, knee, boom, dead Jigglypuff at 60. And if so, if you space two aerials well, Jigglypuff is almost a kill percent. Whereas if you're CCing well, Falcon is heavy, you've got good defensive game, mm. then maybe Hungrybox has to outplay you for uh, twice as long, which is really uncommon yeah. uh, in most of Puff's matchups. So are, are we gonna, do you think we're gonna see a lot more of this matchup in the future then? Um, uh, or like, what's kind of the, the length do you think before this is gonna get figured out and Puff is gonna be back 100% uh, up on this matchup? If Puff ends up 100% on this matchup, that's gonna be kind of disappointing. I mean, it's oh. not very good for the game, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I wanna see him go 50-50 maybe, let's call it that. Uh, how long? Depends. Hungry boxes, you know he's gonna be thinking about it. Yo, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You can tell by his tweets. Like he's not oh, like yeah. he's got it's in his head right now. Yeah, he's in the lab and he's like, How do I beat this this dude? <laughs> like that's what he's thinking yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. But the other issue is that for both of them at least, uh, they have a lot of other players that they have to keep studying, improving against. Once you're at the top, everyone's looking at you. But if you're on top of the hill, you've got to look down in front, down to mm -hmm. your left, down to your right. And then someone comes up from the back with the magic <laughs> yeah. you don't know, grabs you by the leg and knocks you down. <laughs> you just... Right, so HBox has got to keep on his game against all these different Fox players who all have these different styles. Yep. Wizzy's got to do the same. And since right now he kind of has the edge in their personal matchup and the head-to-head, -head, then that's probably going to stick around for a while unless HBox is willing to sacrifice some of his prep for Wizzy. And I guess uh, vice versa, like maybe Wizzy uh, decides, okay, I'm going to start focusing on how to beat all these Foxes. He's got to beat Mango, who mm -hmm. he hasn't beaten that I can remember in recent memory. Mm -hmm. uh, he got to dodge him at Smash and Splash, so that was uh, pretty big for Wizzy. That's unfortunate, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. I wonder if that would have changed up. Blessing from the bracket gods. That's yeah. what I say. Man. That's <laughs> right. what I gotta say. Now, yeah. Uh, just on on Wizzy though, we've also he was also playing um, some, uh, Ultimate, right? Yeah, he was. Oh, he right. beat Tweak, dude. Uh, it was super impressive. I don't know, how oh, much? Yeah. How how much do you think of this success that he has comes from experimenting and grinding Ultimate? I think it's it's part Ultimate. He told me that he was playing uh, a surprising amount of Ultimate, like okay. even since it came out. But it's also that he's been playing every Smash. Yeah. Every smash. Like he's a he's a heavy hitter in 64. And so I think that general smash system that exists uh, that differs from game to game, but there's some core things that uh, keep it similar. Mm -hmm. I think spending so much time with all these different games has led to him kind of puzzling out that general system more and more and something clicked and let him just take down mm. really good players in both games. Probably having the training against HBox, the slower, slightly floatier yeah, style yeah, yeah. where like 
I'm yeah. going to patience this out. I'm going to space, watch my aerials, be ready on the defensive game. But then I'm going to hit you once, going to be ready to go in. That kind of attitude mm -hmm. uh, translates really well to ultimate yeah. because that is exactly how ultimate works. You've got to be on point with your confirms because you're switching from defensive, zoning, patience, poke to go in and capitalize as hard as possible. So it wouldn't surprise me if that has worked together with his general style against HBox, perhaps. Now, at the beginning of Top A, you uh, mentioned that, you know, every player had, like, a legitimate shot of winning. And that's, to, to me, crazy as someone that's, you know, seen the scene grow for years and years where, you know, you had the five gods and only they could win. And that was the max amount of players in Top 8 you'd be like, oh, okay, they have a shot at it. How have we got to this point where there's so many potential winners in Melee now? Is it just that the skill gap has closed or is, was there another shift? Skill gap, um... The emphasis on streaming, I think, mm. as an important element of like players' income as they're getting older and needing to sustain themselves rather than, you know, being in college or being in high school and like, okay, I could kind of no life this game for so much time. Uh, yeah. But then I think the highest level players kind of have to split their attention a bit. The younger crowd can get in there, build themselves up. There's also the knowledge base as it exists and spreads like more people could just do things that are correct you know mm. and that's something that didn't exist for a lot of melee it was very intuitive slowly figure things out over time you've got your stupid thing that works against your friends and one mm -hmm. or two out of staters but is actually bad and you really shouldn't do it yeah and then eventually it's in your habits and then you get blown up for it later i think people now net play all of the modding frame data yeah. stuff like that that people can use leads to more optimal play across the board because your lower level players now in melee they're insane I play random scrubs. I'm like, why are you better than me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's. Not, like, I, I feel like it's that that connectedness of the the internet as well too. I mean, like we global, as you, baby. As, <laughs> as you mentioned before, you know, back yeah. in the day, it was like you you had to travel and stuff to play other scenes. But now it's like, yeah. I can look online for tutorials. I can look at tournament play and watch these pros. Yeah, I mean, the influx of information is so readily available. Of course, the the level of play is gonna rise, right? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the number one thing that helps me out if I play against people who aren't well known, they know my matchup because there's more ICs around. The only thing that keeps me in there is I've just won against really good players in the past and I've lost against really good players. Like I've had it all happen to me. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, I'm just like, well, I guess it's just another day. <laughs> and sometimes that helps me keep my head when somebody who is actually, I think honestly better than me, and they're like mid-level in yeah. their scene, then they start to choke, and I'm like, oh, hey, cool, Arr, get them. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh, you're such a legend. I'm like, I, I don't feel like a that legend. Was, that was on you for losing that, but you gave yeah. it to me. Yeah, that's true. Now, uh, we have to talk about uh, something we, di we didn't see there, actually, and it's our boy. Yeah. It's our boy, Axe, man. What happened to Axe, man? He was second at Gommel. He was second at Genesis. Yeah. Ooh, uh, what do you think of it, his whole ascension in 2019? Because this dude's taking it to another level, dude. Yeah, so okay. He wasn't at Smash and Splash because he got sick at Gommel. Mm. He recovered from that, and then he's going to go to the Mango next week and then Summit after that, and he wanted to be on his game for That's those. Fair. So he didn't want to force himself to travel again before he was fully recovered, go through all the stress of that, maybe get sick again, and then keep going through the cycle. So he just wanted to relax. <laughs> That's fair. fair. So, so I, I'm, we're just well, at the studio here. We're all big fans of Axe. Do, do you think, like, within the year, he's going to be seeing himself with a with a major win? Do, like, do you think he's one of those guys too that all of the, also have the potential to take a, a whole top eight? Okay, he definitely has the potential, like as mm -hmm. a, as a player and a person. I'm not going to say Pikachu holds him back. Um, okay. Going only Pikachu, kind of holds him back. Okay. Uh. But the real issue is like experience axe gets to travel but as far as training goes he has kind of been stuck in az you know like playing against his couple of friends and that's he's gotten amazing given that and then getting mm -hmm. to travel and then more people want to play him at other tourneys he's a he's a friendly grind machine like he he will play all weekend but i think one of the things that's helped him the most has been net play and doing okay. Mango Axe Wednesdays. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Hey, that's Fair, my favorite yeah. show on Wednesday, baby. That's <laughs> besides that's, this yeah. one. He's getting to play against someone who is almost as fast as him. Yeah. Who is clever, creative, throws stuff at him that he hasn't seen, uh, keeps him on his toes. But it's also a lot of fun mm -hmm. for him, which is what 
you know keeps him in the game that's the he's, important thing yeah the yeah. joy, right? Right, you gotta have fun with the game. Um, now, uh, we're almost out of time with you, but before we do, I just uh, wanna talk also, alongside Captain Falcon winning a major, we also saw Dreffen qualify for Summit after he won a three-way tiebreaker. This guy's been in the Smash scene for a very long time. Is, is this just like the event of throwbacks? Like, are, are we seeing a lot more <laughs> of like that, that old school come forward now? Okay, I won't spend too much time on it. Like you said, we're almost out of time, but I talked to Dreffen about it. I asked yeah. him, so, so what's different this time? And basically he's been taking a little more time to lab out modern technology mm. and along with that his slightly slower style in order to get conversions you've got to be in the right place at the right time more speed means that you can get to the right place faster yeah but if you're just already there you don't have to be fast so something you'll see if you watch some of his matches he slowly moves to the right place and then he politely waits <laughs> until it's time to swing and but, then he'll move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Combine no. that with some new defensive uh, technology, like Amsa attacking. He was nailing a lot of those. Uh, mm. uh, right, right, right. Yeah, just stuff like that, keeping his head, because he's been competing for a long time. Yep. So sometimes you get that whole nobody wants to lose to the old Sheik player. Yeah. <laughs> And but, plus, she can be infuriating when she plays slow. You're fast. She slaps you. You lose your jump. You're like, I hate this. Yeah. Drappen keeps his head. He's got the new tech. Uh, he's been practicing a bit more. And then sometimes you get a little close. You, you can smell it. And that old competitive fire comes back. You're like, oh, I'm taking this. I yeah. think that might have uh, woken up for him a bit, once, especially once he beat none. Because then he was playing like a mm -hmm. maniac. So Yeah, yeah that's cool. good. It's good to see, uh, you know, again, some of those old players, when you're in it for so long, yeah. like to keep at it and then have it actually start paying off is, is really nice. The but Rocky uh, Balboa of the scene, baby. Exactly. Wobbles, oh, yeah. uh, as I mentioned, we're out of time. Thank you so much for joining us, but we appreciate you being uh, here and uh, talking Melee with us. Hey, I appreciate you guys having me. It's always fun to reflect on the event afterwards, mm -hmm. try and puzzle out the story, why things happened, and use that to figure out what's going on forward. So next journey I commentate is going to be Low Tier City. I get to have a little more in my head for that. So I appreciate you guys giving me the chance to talk. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Much love. Now, while Rizrobe was making history, Drew was killing it in the Tekken scene. So let's check out the highlights from Electric Clash. Are you making oh. a comeback? Good punish with the down four yeah, two. Yeah, unfortunately missed out on yeah. the whip pop, punish pop, coming pop, out from Commando. So yeah, pop, yeah, pop, pop show show wall. Nice, yeah. there we go, down back one. Oh, oh the 14, oh. that's a twice. He does it oh. a third time. Oh. He's at four, he's quiet. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that was me! Stomp oh, low, <laughs> steps him perfectly. Down forward one, down forward one. It's the pressure, oh, and he's done. Yeah, and he's a perfect. Done. He said, oh, sorry, I was blinking. <laughs> Pretty close, uh, though, very close. Oh, nice, wall oh, rising. Oh, what? Wait, just, what? No, wait, what? What? Wait, what? What's happening? How is it going on? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, people are knocking over lights. This has just happened. Okay. People went so nuts, they knocked over our lights. That's How are so you awesome. not dead? Oh my god, are you kidding me? He gets the with the Swallow oh, 74. Breaks it. Sure. Again, he has that Starburst available to him. Seven seconds. Boom! Oh, oh buddy! Spinning like a ballerina, runs at him with a running two. Trying to pressure JCR instead of giving him predictable moves. Oh, two walks on the map. And ah. takes the first round against JDCR. Shadow going for it. Shadow trying to make a name for himself again. <laughs> He's already a beast. Oh, man. Doesn't get the wall, though. Man, someone's going to die. Oh, All right. my. Wow. Here we go. There's a nick of health left, though. One mistake ends it all for either of them. Ten oh, seconds. Oh, just uh... And there we go. JDCR taking game one versus Anakin. Here we go. Heading into game two. Anakin, should I put that work in? Okay, oh, Mr. Lock. Stomp the leg again. Yo, but we're supposed to oh, that the hop kick. JDCR connecting it. Is this enough yeah, to rock out? Yes, it is. It. And with that, he stays alive, taking the 2 0 over Anakin. Nice set. Hey, oh, and there we go. JDCR, JDCR will rock it out. None no. of the kill. None of the kill. Get out of the kill. The kill. And the rage up. Doesn't oh. matter. The rage up will beat the option. And JDCR takes it and moves off to winner's final. Oh, tackles. Get the mount. Doesn't break it this time. Okay, what's the Oki? Hey, oh. he goes for the shin bones, baby. Give me them toes. Joey yeah. here getting on the board. Ties it up. Oh, hey. a dark rocker. That's a sub. Here we go. Take it over. What she got? Gets the wall spot too. Dang. Oh, look Mad at that. Damage. That new move. Okay. Oh, and he was down there for 80. Yo. Wait for that low. Okay, here we go. Joey's still staying alive, though. Oh, oh that low could He's still. Oh, the hand. The win, punish. Hey. Oh, okay. Nice patience there by JCR. 
and the hop, hop kick. kick. That's what we were waiting oh, for. They're still alive. Yo, oh, yo, 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 JDCR went on a wild losers run to win Electric Clash. Drew, this dude got knocked uh, losers by Shadow 20Z, uh, but finally got his revenge in Grand Finals. I, I want to talk about the whole matchup here. Uh, uh, well, uh, obviously, we'll talk about the adjustments he made, but sure. I heard you, you've been popping off about uh, Shadow as well. Yeah. Like, what are you seeing in this guy? Look, Shadow plays Claudio. Claudio is a cool character. He powders up his hand and slaps you like it, like a pimp from Atlanta, baby. <laughs> and that's what he does. He just comes in and slaps you. It's amazing. But, so, so can nobody, like, what adjustments did JDCR have to make then to, to get this win because he got knocked down yeah, by him absolutely. into the lowers so he was in recently more recently he's been playing armor king armor king's a character in tekken that mm -hmm. unfortunately while he's super cool he does not have a way to keep up pressure okay. so what he did was he straight up he was like i'm gonna go to my old main Hihachi, and what i'm gonna do with Hihachi mm -hmm. is i'm gonna make sure that i apply that pressure that armor king's missing and i'm gonna keep the the pedal to the metal and make sure that I put my foot on this guy's throat and destroy him. So it was, it was just the pressure. Like so, once he g I get got more aggressive, then that he was able, or it was just the tools, the that movement I and the pressure. Him? The movement and the pressure okay. is what what kept the what kept the the pressure on to Shadow, and Shadow unfortunately okay. couldn't handle it, and that's why he unfortunately got swept like reverse six old. Okay. So are you su are you surprised then that uh, he didn't switch off the the SmackDown character Claudia like twenty or Shadow? Sorry. This, well, Shadow like, originally actually played Lily. Uh, he played Lily in the first uh, first set, and he couldn't do anything because that's his old main. Lily. Yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, it was just tough, man. It's because a lot of the Korean players they they're known for playing Mashima characters, mm -hmm. but in the arcade, uh, you you can play your Mashima characters, but on console because there's input delay and mm -hmm. it's not really arcade perfect. Yeah. They they play other characters like Dragon Off or Armor King, mm -hmm. but he just decided, you know what, Electric Clash. Machine must have an electric god fist. <laughs> Is that I'm gonna try to play it. I'm gonna try to play it. And that's exactly what he you did. You stick into the theme. Absolutely. He, he came and dressed up for the party. So, is there another character that he could have used then? Like, is there someone else that you think would have fit his play style that would have allowed him to get a, an advantage and get another win over JDCR? Or was it kind of just like fate? Like, he had to stick with Claudia and, and that was it? I think he's just. Uh, He's only been in that situation maybe once or twice in his life. Like he won final round, yeah. but so maybe he's experienced. Like he so, didn't it's know. a little more experience. Okay, yeah. but he's a talented player. Uh, he beat Anakin. He beat so many great players mm -hmm. to get there. Like he put JD Star in the losers, yeah. and that's a hard feat to do. So mm -hmm. I feel like he just needs to just play more at that high level and get used to that situation. Well, as you mentioned, like Shadows had some really solid uh, results lately. Where do you rank him right now amongst like all the American players? Uh, he's definitely in the top five. Top he's five for sure. Top five. It's Joey Fury, Anakin. Uh, Shadow, uh, and I think there's two names that aren't on, aren't on my list right now, but they're mm. definitely fantastic players. Those are the names I keep seeing yeah. come up too. Now, I just want to talk, uh, this event was uh, in Toronto, so there was a bunch of Canadians as well uh, representing. How did they perform on like the, the stage against everyone else? Oh, dude, there's a guy named the Spoodler. The sp the what? The Spoodler. The Spoodler. The that Spoodler is cooked name. everybody. He beat Speed <laughs> Kicks, dude. That's another top five player. Speed Kicks and Speed uh, Kicks, okay. Imagine, the other two top five. He beat the Spoodler. But, uh, the Spoodler is a great name, dude. Oh, the Spoodler spoodled everybody. <laughs> it was amazing. I loved it. So uh, <laughs> he's from like, Montreal and he's a fantastic Master Raven. And like the best part was he wasn't even doing the optimal combos, of Master Raven. But his timing and his ability to like really throw your opponent off, incredible. So, and on top of that, home court advantage, baby. Shouts to the Raptors. They, uh, <laughs> yeah, you and your tent here. The, uh, <laughs> the um, so with Spoodler, like and just the Canadian talent. Then do you see them uh, having a bit like like are on the scale of North America, are they up there? They have a ways to go. You talked about them like not having optimal combos, or is that exactly what gave him his edge? But if, Or if he had optimal combos, do you think he'd do a lot better? I, I think, well, the Canadian talent is very strong, believe it or not, but the mm -hmm. problem is that we don't have a lot of exposure to high-level talent. Lot, yeah. That's why events like Electric Clash that's true. Uh, are really important because we get to expose them to these high level play mm -hmm. and then they get to see how they go against this high level play. Mm -hmm. Right? And unfortunately, Canadians don't really travel to America a lot yeah, because it's, yeah. it's fairly expensive. Yeah. So having people come to Canada to play, to experience JDCR, Korean high level play, 
shadow, someone that only if you're in America can play against. Yeah, or yeah, Anakin, yeah, yeah. the best American player, in my opinion. Like that, that these are the things that make people like level up. Just that little exposure of knowing how they play, like yeah. a little insight, just just making them feel human. You need, JDCR is we a god. need more of these events. Then, like, we gotta import more Americans up here. Absolutely, because like like this they're taking all our hockey skill, players. Right? We want yeah. all their FTC players. Give us all your FTC <laughs> players. <laughs> no, someone someone else you mentioned too, uh, of course, was uh, Anakin. Woo, that was one of the own. favorites. Yeah, along JDCR at Electric Clash, but he exited in fifth. Um, was this just him uh, coming back to Earth after a crazy showing uh, combo breaker, or, or do you think like he still's got the potential to um, you know stay up? At the top. Oh, like, he, he fifth is had, good. Fifth is good. Fifth is, fifth, yeah. The fact that we're saying fifth is a bad result for Anakin <laughs> kind of just shows you how good he is. Yeah, right? Right, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, no, he just he just had an off night. Like yeah. he just had, it happens to everybody, right? What and was it like he was just not connecting? Uh, I think when he played against Joey Fury, he yeah. thought Joey Fury was probably uh, a little yeah. rusty because Joey Fury kind of took a break, mm -hmm. right? Joy, uh, but Joey Fury's Marduk just put in the work, baby. Mm -hmm. Just put his hands on him, and it was over. That's a, that's a little way you know anything. Anyways, Drew, uh, there, we have one last order of business. You know what time it is right now. I do. We I do. have to pick uh, your player of the week. Pretty sure you know who it is, but oh. drum roll it out here. What is it? R Rizro, baby. Yeah, of course. That dude is so clean. He he beat Esai in Smash 64, and that's what people aren't talking about right now. Yeah. He, he beat Tweak in Ultimate, that's and nuts, that's dude. crazy. Tweak just won. Tweak made me lose so much money at Goblin. <laughs> he just won a tournament two weeks ago. The biggest one in Canada. And then on top of that, he beat Hungry Box mm -hmm. as, in Melee. Twice, yeah. He, he's, he's trying to save Melee, dog. He's defeating he's the evil melee. Darth Vader that's Hungry Box. So the rise of the Falcon. Is this absolutely. it? Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> absolutely not. The rebellion is. One time. He had one week. The rebellion has been halted for one week. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that is all we have, time we have for FGC Wednesday. Thanks to Wobbles, of course, for joining to chat Melee with us. And thanks to you guys for watching. Tomorrow, we're hitting up Rocket League from DreamHack Dallas with Gibbs. Until then, hit us on our socials, and we'll see you tomorrow. tomorrow.